Dr. Jesse Sanders, owner and chief veterinarian of Aquatic Veterinary Services. Today we will be talking about bacterial infections in fish. And for the purposes of this video, I'll be focusing more on freshwater fish, the most common species that I see, koi and goldfish. So as I'm sure you've gathered from a lot of our other videos, uh, fish live in a toilet. <laughs> There are bacteria and parasites all over the place, and fish have great immune function at keeping all of those, you know, kind of invaders in check. So a lot of the times with bacterial infections, it's not actually a primary issue. It's a secondary problem caused by a primary stressor, water quality, elsewhere that has allowed the fish to become more vulnerable. Now, in koi and goldfish, these are mostly um, Eremonis and Pseudomonas species. And we have come to find that some different species of these are more resistant than others. Now, resistance means that given a certain dose of an antibiotic, that bacteria either will not die or it just won't be reduced in the numbers that, you know, we have a threshold for. And you can compare different strains or different species of, you know, Aromonas and Pseudomonas. And basically you put them on a plate and you stamp a bunch of uh, antibiotics in given concentrations on the plate and you watch how the bacteria spread. And this will give us an idea of, you know, what antibiotic that we can use. So a lot of the times resistance occurs in these species when they've been exposed to antibiotics at weak doses or incomplete doses. So you have a fish, you have antibiotic from wherever the hell you got it, and you give the fish an injection. Depending on, you know, how big that fish is, again, we're veterinarians, we're giving everything by weight, um, might not be a completely effective dose. They might need a follow-up dose if that bacteria hasn't been cleared. And, you know, the bacteria that survive that injection they are usually more prone to being resistant because you've gotten rid of all their competition. So there's more space, there's more resources. Anyone that's carrying a little plasmid that can, you know, withstand an antibiotic is gonna be around for the long haul. And this is what happens when antibiotics are just kind of given haphazardly. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of been ingrained in the fish industry and we in veterinarians are partly responsible for that because they don't train us to deal with fish in veterinary school. So we're working on it. We're I am here to help um, get these fish back on, on track. Um, so if your fish has a bacterial infection and the clinical signs for this are, can be, you know, a very apparent ulcer, again, a fish where, you know, the skin and scales have eroded away and you're seeing the underlying musculature. Um, sometimes, again, it can just be kind of general lethargy, decreased appetite, and even sudden death. So, as I'm sure you've heard these clinical signs in many other, other videos, it's really important that you get your veterinarian out there to treat your fish. Now, if you do see these signs or in the pet store, um, unfortunately there are over-the-counter antibiotics still available, um, at least in the U.S. But just keep in mind that these antibiotics are not approved or checked by any organizations. Um, all the drugs that your doctor uses, that veterinarians use, these have to go through an approval and, you know, checks to make sure that this is actually what it says it is. Everything in the box at the pet store, uh, nobody checks those, provided that they even say what's in them. Some of the all natural treatments, um, they don't list any ingredients, uh, which as a veterinarian, if I was to give those to my pets would make me very, very nervous. Um, a lot of the treatments that are available in pet stores are also water-based treatments. So essentially you have a little packet of whatever, you dump it in your tank, and it just goes everywhere. It's on the fish, it's on the decor, it's on your biologic filtration. And if there is actually an antibiotic in there that's alive and not going to kill your fish, um, it's going to wipe out your biologic filtration, which if you have a really heavily stocked system is going to set you up for new tank syndrome and cause a whole lot of other problems. So. If you are concerned, again, ulcers, lethargy, decreased appetite that is not related to temperature, um, please contact your aquatic veterinarian and make sure that your fish gets appropriate care. I know it's very easy to go to the pet store and just grab something off the shelf, 
but it's really not doing your fish any good. Um, and they can certainly die from, you know, prolonging care. So that is everything about bacterial infections in fish. If you have any more questions about fish or fish health issues, please visit our website at cafishvet.com. At Aquatic Veterinary Services, fish are treated like family. Thank you.